Danae, you absolute madman. You pulled it off. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for Dune Part 2. I got to see a special screening on Sunday and it was packed house. Fortunately, there was no buckets. This whole thing has gone off the rails so much that the theater guys did talk about it and said, we are going to have them. They're going to come out in March 1st. The film, probably the best way I can say it is that Dune Part 1 walked so part two could run and it runs for a film that's two hours and 47 minutes long i never once felt the need to check the time i never once felt bored or that things were going slowly i was never once not entertained this film was phenomenal in a lot of aspects both in terms of how much it got from the books and at the same time how much it couldn't still fit in and that just kind of gives more testament to david lynch's version i think it's terrible the man was boned from the start if over five hours of film cannot capture the book one movie was not going to do it dune chapter two picks up right after where the first one left off following paul and his mother working with the fremen all the while the events of what happened previous are starting to kind of collapse in on itself. The Emperor, played by Christopher Walken, and his daughter, played by Florence Pugh, are ha are overseeing the events of what has happened, and they are starting to see the ramifications of said decisions, and being that Paul is still alive, things are not going the way that was foretold by the Bene Gesserit. This all fuels into a civil war with new players, including Austin Butler's absolute psychotic nephew, to Stalin Salazar's oil baron. It's so wackadoo how much this film goes off the deep end in terms of weird out there sci-fi between the costume design, the character design, the planet design, the world building that is admittedly not as strong as it was in the first one because the first one was the world builder the second one is the story there's still a lot of really weird shit in this that is so welcoming to see there are some things that they still didn't even get to there were a few things that even i think danae was like you know what i can't go that far because there are some changes for those of you who have read the book there are a few elements that were not put into the film not that they're breaking. If anything, I actually think the film works pretty well without their inclusion. But you can understand kind of why they weren't included for time, for pace, as well as just for like, maybe realizing that the audience could only handle so much. I would have liked to have seen it, but at the same time, the film does not suffer from it. The action scenes are incredibly well done from how Greg Fraser is able to portray the story. The amount of really fucking sick shots in this movie are so innumerable that I almost had to remind myself that, hey, Greg's good, but he's not Deacon's. And the fact that I kept thinking it was shot by a Deacon's movie, that's how good this movie looked a lot of the time. Greg Fraser is more of the very high aperture version of Deacon's, if that's a good way to say it. He lets the unfocused nature of how he captures his images to let the audience have an image, but then to let them form it and to let them kind of use their own creativity to establish and build the mythos of what he is establishing with the lens and that works so well in terms of Paul's story because the whole point of this about him becoming Muad'Dib and the whole prophecy with the Bene Gesserit is that he would become something that he did not want to become and that is what this whole movie is about is him trying to become part of the Fremen but also to deny this prophecy that he is foretold to be because of the consequences that could result from it. And that is definitely more for people who have read the books, especially obviously Dune Messiah. For those of you who don't know, from what I've gathered how this film goes, I really do think they're making Messiah. If it does, I will be so happy to see it because truly speaking, Dune and Dune Messiah are perfect together. And this film looks like it's building up to it. On the whole, the storytelling, the pacing, the music, oh, he holds off on doing the yeah, yeah. for a while, apologies for how bad that sounded, but he holds off on that until it's needed. And then 
pauses go fucking nuts. I, at one point, there's a battle sequence where when I was listening to the soundtrack on the drive home from the movie, I could hear the bagpipes in the background. I'm like, oh my god, they incorporated the House of Atreides music. That's fantastic. For those who thought that Dune was slow, if maybe a little bit tad more on the building rather than the execution, you will have no qualms with this movie. You will enjoy it from beginning to end. You will enjoy the pacing, the action, the story, the entire visual element of this movie. You will be absolutely giddy from it. There are maybe a tad few things that are a little different, particularly the character Chani. Chani is a lot more of an individual in this movie. In the book, she's kind of there. She's Paul's love interest, but she's also just kind of there. I always found that she was very bland in the book. In this one, they give her more of a personality, and I think what she is trying to establish is the other side of an opposition to Paul. Kind of the reminder to the audience of what he's doing while he doesn't want to do it himself. He thinks it necessary that there can be consequences. There will be effects from what he's doing. Some might not like what they do with her. I liked it because, it, again, it made her a character. And I am, again, interested to see what happens if they make Messiah because it really looks like they're making Messiah. If there's any negatives I have, it is that the end of the film kind of does a little bit wrap up, but at the same time, I actually like how it ends because it does dip its toe into Messiah for a very good reason, actually. Of a very good reason, storytelling-wise, in my opinion. Dune Chapter 2 is probably one of the better sequels I've seen. The music, the story, the pacing, the characters, the acting, the set design, Everything in this movie is off the fucking charts. It works, it flows, and I'm already buying my tickets to see it a second time. In the end, Dune Chapter 2 gets a 7 out of 7 from me. I really, really enjoyed it. I already want to see more of it. I've been talking with my bud who I went and saw it with last night. We, we talked about it for an hour again today and how much we enjoyed it, how much we wanted to see more of this story continue, and also whether we're gonna get the bucket or not. I feel that I've been a little bit stingy with my sevens over the years, and I just kind of feel like if it's a movie that checks all the boxes to me, I'm gonna give it that seven if it deserves it. Some might find that to be a little bit generous, but I think it really deserves it. This is already my contender for best movie of the year. And admittedly, the first one was my movie of the year back when it came out as well. So, but in the end, guys, that's just my opinion. I'd love to see what you guys have to say about the movie. Please let me know in the comments below. If you liked this review, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, please subscribe. Until then, enjoy the spice when you get to see the movie yourself. I think you'll enjoy it.